Welcome back, today we are flying out the Tornado F3. Is it really as bad or as good as people are making it out to be? There are some people that say this thing is absolute dog water, this thing can fly at all and is worse than something like the FGR. And then you have the other hand that says that this thing is actually pretty good, as long as you fly it right, as long as you fly it like an interceptor. True to the story is, yes, it is kinda poo. But at the same time, it is a better pick than something like the FGR in the current meta. Your missiles are better, you have a better flight model, and yes, your turn rate up at high speed is worse than an F-104. However, at medium to low speed with the wings out, it's still not good, do not get me wrong. But at super low speed with the flaps down, you can somewhat win a 1v1. Does that mean that this thing is meta in the slightest? No. This plane is not good and some reviewers were saying that this thing had very good engines. It had a very high top speed even with a full missile loadout and it has very good acceleration. Your acceleration is kind of middle of the bunch. It's not really that great. It does go Mach 1.15 on the deck. But when you look at something like an F-14 or a MiG-29 or an MLD and you are just gonna have a little bit of a problem trying to get them off your 6. If there is someone on your 6 about 7 or 8 kilometers behind you, you are gonna be struggling if you are flying around Mac to actually turn around and get a missile off in the head-on. If you do get the missile off however, this radar is not that strong. It has a very strong radar in the sense that if you go directly head-on, if they aren't notching, if they aren't doing any wild stuff, this radar is pretty good. It has pretty good range, it picks up targets pretty easily, but the second they even go remotely to the side, your missile will instantly lose lock. The radar itself is extremely easy to notch. The sky flashes itself are not that bad. So if you run into someone that isn't using chaff and you can lock them up with your normal radar, your missile will have a pretty easy time tracking and killing the guy, but this does mean he has to be at higher altitude and that he isn't using chaff. You can of course risk it if he is using chaff, but it's just not as reliable. And I'll have an, an example of this a little bit later in the video against an F-104. This plane is just extremely off meta and the people that say just fly it like an interceptor, you can't. You do not have the capability to fly it like an interceptor. We all take off at the same time. We all have the same match duration. And there really just isn't anything to intercept. You're mostly looking at the big groups of enemies. And you don't want to fight them all at the same time. You want to kind of stay around the outskirts. And you'll see me do this throughout the entirety of this video. I'm never really getting in the thick of it. The nice thing is however that they did change the engine temperatures of the tornadoes. And this goes for all of them. So now they're 900 degrees instead of almost 1200. The flares are also plentiful and they're also closer to the engine so you'll find that flaring in this thing is a hell of a lot easier than it used to be in the old tornadoes that had the flare pots on the wingtips as well as much hotter engines. It almost made it impossible in the rear aspect to flare anything so if you like the tornado but that's the thing that puts you off they're a lot more flyable in that sense now. The real issue is just the flight model. If this radar was really good then we would kind of look at something like the EJ Kai scenario. Well, sure the flight model is kind of meh, it's not that great. But the fact that you can deny mostly every plane in the head-on is very very powerful. This thing lacks that kind of thing. It does not get the ability to simply slam everything that tries to put your nose on you. Your turning circle is too big, your radar is too easy to notch and all of this together just makes it so. That people get past the head on extremely easily. And if it's something like a MiG-29 or an F-14. They can actually turn around after you. And then just end up catching you. And I'll show you exactly this in this clip right here. We go head on on the deck. Because that's why I like to be in this thing. I do not want to have to launch anything. Because I just try to dodge all the missiles by going to the deck. If you try to notch in this. You're probably not even going to be able to turn out in time. To actually start notching. The second you start getting locked up. You want to make sure that you are not flying at them anymore. You already want to start preparing for defense. That's why I stay on the deck. This means that I can keep my nose on the enemy. This means that I can keep them locked on. And this also means that I am not that vulnerable. And I can actually attack them back. It's very easy for them to simply go sideways. And the, the issue here is. That they can keep the lock with the radar on you. While they are going sideways and they will still have me locked if I'm flying directly at it. And this just means that my missile is going to eat shit and die. 
and their missile is gonna make me eat shit and die. So all in all, not exactly, well, ideal. So right here, F-14 coming head on, and I'm not really having any of it, so I'm gonna go low to the deck. You see that this AOE and this drift is absolutely insane. So, we fly past him, I'm not gonna try to dogfight an F-14. He does a 180, I'm going Mach 1.05 at the moment, and let's look at what the F-14 does. He's barely any slower. I am barely gaining distance on him, so this F-14 is now... Just planted on my 6 and he's just gonna keep running me down. I'm gonna fly towards the teammate. Nothing really happens. I don't kill him. He doesn't die. He doesn't kill my teammate. Literally nothing happens. So I'm just gonna skip that. But that's the reality of this thing. Everything that sits on your 6 within 6 or 7 kilometers basically kills your entire game. Because you are not really able to get your nose on them. And if they are quick enough, you are gonna have major issues. And you might think, but hey, you're, you're gonna show me a 7 kill game now, and then you're gonna show me an 8 kill with an assist from Cavenup, who I recommend you subscribe to. And you're telling me this plane is shit. You also got an ace in it, you also got a quad kill in like 30 seconds. Yes, the issue is that every plane in this BR that has these missiles can do these things. It doesn't really have any strengths. Yes, it can work. Yes, it can do certain things. Yes, sure, there are scenarios where you will be able to get kills in it, but almost every scenario in which you get kills, every scenario in which you do basically anything, guess what? There are other planes that can do it much better than you. With exceptions like something like the FGR. The FGR at least has a working gun. That's the issue with this thing as well. The plane is very unwieldy. At least you don't have a gun port. The gun doesn't hit that hard. I've been getting a lot of crits with it. And... All in all, this plane is just a chore to fly. Luckily, the main issue of the tornado used to be, at least in something like a down tier, like you are seeing right here, that getting guns on is very much problematic. Luckily, it gets six more missiles and it loses a gun for it. So yes, you do lack a little bit of firepower when it comes to the guns. However, you do get a lot more missiles and a lot more useful missiles at that as well. And A10 comes in from the left. Let's actually start looking at a little bit of gameplay because... Right now, we haven't actually done anything that's required any kind of brain power. We are just flying straight and we're just shooting missiles at people. And that's just the reality of this plane. If you are getting stuck with a dogfight with certain 104s, you are actually going to end up struggling a little bit. Now, it is a 10.3 game and I know that the enemy basically doesn't have anything with a pulse doppler radar. So now I'm not really too worried about staying at a little bit of an altitude. F5 comes in. Switch over to the Sky Flash, shoot Sky Flash off. He is not low enough, and even if he has Chef, it doesn't matter. He eats the missile, and we go on towards the next one. Shoot a missile from the F5C, we switch lock, and we are gonna fire a Sky Flash at the next guy as well. Boom, another crit in the Mirage. We are just gonna keep on flying straight, because that's all what you do in this thing. In hindsight, I probably should have just shot an A9L at this guy, because, well, this guy is not paying attention in the slightest, and he would have just eaten a missile right there he didn't flare he wasn't really paying attention he just ends up nudging us on accident because he's just flying perpendicular to us so now we have an a10 in the area two f5s and another f104g and the f104g looks to be taking a liking to me and i'm not really a fan of it so i'm just gonna be diving out for now i do have the fuel pots on and i can drop them at will but for now i just want to make sure that I kind of drain them for a bit because I don't know if I'm going to need the fuel at the end here. Because I don't know what the enemy is going to be doing. And I just want to make sure that I don't lose because of it. He starts getting a little bit closer. We start outrunning him. Yes, I can run from this guy. The thing is, it's an F-104. If I can try to dogfight anything, it's going to be an F-104. But I'm kind of waiting for him to kind of break off. And then I will instantly go after him. I don't care if this is a fake. I do not care what his thought process is right now. I just want him to give me a little bit of room. The sad reality is that I'm going to try to pull in here. He instantly goes into a bit of a notch or like a sideways thing here. He's not really notching me, but he's just denying me the launch. And because the missiles kind of suck when you're shooting them from behind. Well, this right here is why A9Ls are not as great as they once were. He's using his afterburner. He is flaring, but he's very close to us. And he's flying straight away from us. And this means that... Normally, at least in the previous patch, 
those missiles would have very easily connected. Right now, I'm not really too worried about my missile amount because this guy is locked in a fight and I just want him to stay healed. So I'm just going to be shooting my missiles off. I'm not really too worried about it because we are going to be basically RTB after we kill this guy. So we are going to try to dive after him, pick up some speed and pull into him. But I actually have to start air braking and I have to lose speed because you can tell that this turn rate is just not it. It doesn't start becoming decent until we are going very slow. The issue with that is if the f 4 keeps its speed then we can't really force a slow fight. Because if I force it to be too slow then I get the, the problem where he will start outpowering us and he will just keep getting energy and we don't have that luxury because our engines aren't that amazing so i'm gonna actually kind of preemptively leave this turn i'm gonna go up and over and i'm gonna try to slot in directly behind him and we get position he starts flying away and now i just want to make sure that i keep him here now that he's still somewhat close because he's flying towards the airfield and i'm expecting him to do exactly what i think he is and using these missiles he's gonna start dodging a little bit and he's gonna give us a little bit of extra time to get close to him. And there you have it. He starts out accelerating us. We shoot another missile off. It gets eaten by the flares. And we are just gonna slowly but surely reel this guy in. And even if we get directly on him. If he starts maneuvering too much. We are gonna have a very hard time actually killing him. Luckily he flies perfectly straight. And we hit him at 1.14 kilometers with the radar gun sight. So now he is crit. And he is gonna attempt to run towards the base. He starts being a little bit more cautious of it. Every time we shoot he starts maneuvering. It is kind of annoying. The radar gun side is of course kind of an L. When it comes to hitting people that are maneuvering a lot. And he's just really trying to rock his plane around. So that he, so that he can make it back to the base AA. And you can tell that even with me on a 6. And he is quit. I'm struggling to get my nose on him. I also want to make sure I don't break my wings off. And I'm now near the AA. So I have to break off. A10 is taking off as well. And then there is another F5C of which we do not know the location right now. So the F104 is back in AA cover. And he tells me to suck his balls. I appreciate the offer. But you get to suck mine instead at the end of the game. So we fly away right now. F104 is probably going to be landing. And the A10 is firing missiles at the tornado. And as the A10 is shooting missiles. He's kind of flying into our direction. And this guy doesn't have any radar missiles. And... Well, we still do. So I'm just going to fly as close as possible to him. Without it being too close to the missile to arm. I just want to get the missile off in a range where he really can't do anything about it. He gets too close and he can't really dodge it. You don't want to shoot it too close. Then you kind of endanger yourself by going into his gun range. His aimline L's and head-on are probably not going to be tracking. But you want to just give the missile a little bit of time to pick up some speed. Just so that it's a little bit more maneuverable and it can actually guide in properly. Now sure that's an A10. It's probably going to hit anyway. But I just wanted to deny him the ability to notch my missile. Because if I shoot it from very far away it's very easy for him to simply turn around. Notch the missile or dive to the ground. And if you wait a little bit they might just actually think that you don't have any of those missiles left. Or it's an A10 ground pounder and he's not thinking at all. But in the case that he is... You kind of, you can try to play some mind games. Most of the time you don't really need to do so. But hey, in the one case where it does work, you might as well attempt it. And this is exactly what I meant earlier. The F-104 was not running chaff. We saw this earlier and we just switched to the normal radar mode. Because now he can't really notch us. And he is in clear airspace. He's flying directly at us. We wait till about 10 kilometers. And because he's flying straight... It's flying into the missile. So the missile doesn't actually need to travel 10 kilometers. Sure, it's going directly vertical. So it's going to lose a lot of energy. And look who it is. It's the guy that told us to suck his balls. Unfortunately for him, his balls stay dirty. And mine get clean instead. F on the 4 down. And that's going to be kill number 6. And now the salt begins. If you want to shit talk. Well, you might actually end up winning the game. And this might sound a little bit ironic. Coming in, uh, in a few minutes here, but we will see. Look at him, he is molding in the chat. Honestly, quite incredible. So, I tell him to cope, he is dead and he is probably going to be losing the game. At this point, I am pretty confident that this F5C is going to die to us. Because all he has been doing is bombing. He's probably not going to actually even try to attempt to attack us. So, I'm just going to loop over and this is the guy that earlier kind of ignored our missiles. The, the guy that I should have shot an A9L at. And I'm going to just park myself on a 6 so I'm gonna actually start shit talking a little bit here and normally I don't do this before I get the kill 
So I tell him I'm worth 7 kills. Even though it's all missiles and it's no, no guns at all. Look at his turn rate, it's absolutely appalling. Keep in mind, I'm on 13 minutes of fuel here. So we sweep the wings out. We start turning after the guy. And I couldn't help myself. I'm looking at the scoreboard. I'm looking at everything. I'm thinking about what I'm going to say to the F-104 to piss him off a little bit more. And, uh, well, we're going to lock him. We are diving on the F-5 now. And we basically have him by the balls. All we need to do is, well... Not mess this up. So we shoot a missile off. We pull out. So the thing with the AIM-9Ls is that they do have good range. But from 3 kilometers from behind. You are probably not actually going to be hitting anything. The nice thing is. If you are behind someone. And you see that the guy in front of him. Starts pulling up. And you shoot the missile at him. He is probably just going to go vertical. And fly directly into it. It's not foolproof. But hey. At least. Yeah okay. I'm joking. I did rip my wing off. But uh. We still end up getting the bag. So call it field shit talk. Call it whatever you want. But hey. It ended up working in the end didn't it? So this guy is going to maul his absolute ass off. So I tell El Bozo to the guy that I ripped my wings off behind. But hey. It doesn't matter. We're also out of fuel. So look at that. Perfect timing. Now for the last game here we got 8 kills. And an assist from Mr. Cavenup. Now normally he uploads tank content. And he's pretty damn good at it. I highly suggest you to take a look at him. But let's take a little bit of a look at more of an ideal scenario in this vehicle. I couldn't be bothered to fly it some more. He had some good gameplay and I thought, why not use it? Yes, that FPS stutter is from the video itself. You couldn't really fix it. One kill with the Sky Flash. Switch to the AIM-9L from the side. SU-17 actually sees it. And he ends up going for Flash. And now there is a bunch of guys directly ahead of us. Why is this so important? Because when there is a bunch of enemies, they're probably all going to be looking at the same friendly of yours. So he goes to the F4, he's clearly not paying attention. F14, clearly not paying attention. And then the F16 gets locked up by the Sky Flash. And he starts chaffing, but he notches a little bit too late. And an F16, for example, well, it doesn't pull that well at high speed. Sure, it got buffed. And I will make a video on the F16 AJ. But in reality, the thing that you just saw happen, it's also multi-strike, like you saw at the end or at the start of my video. Or this video, I should say. But is this something another plane couldn't have done? Sure, if it didn't have A9Ls and a sort of radar missile, it couldn't have done this. The thing is, almost every plane nowadays has good IR missiles and a few radar missiles. We shoot a radar missile off at the guy at altitude. It doesn't seem to be tracking. It's going to run out of range. So we just switch targets. We go for the MiG-29. And then the missile goes for the flares of the F4E. The missile kind of regains track. It goes back into the group. But unfortunately for us, the missile doesn't actually end up having enough energy to pull back in. F4E in front of us. We're not even going to bother trying to pull for that. Because we are just going to become very vulnerable to the rest of the match. And we just kind of keep flying straight. What plane can't do this? It's not insanely fast. It doesn't have the best acceleration. The maneuverability at high speed is absolute piss poor. The radar isn't that great. So at the end of the day, all you're stuck with is a 9 ls which are of course great. And some missiles that work when your radar isn't being notched. Does this sound like a plane that's actually good? Can you do good things with the plane? Sure you can. But that doesn't mean that the vehicle itself is actually good. People like to use the argument of it's not the plane, it's the pilot. But that's only so much your plane can do if your enemy isn't stupid. Luckily there's a lot of stupid enemies, but that's besides the point for now. Let's look at car racing on circuits. We have car number one, which is basically a Toyota Igo. Versus the second car, which is something like a BMW M2. Does the M2 have better performance? Will it win most battles on the track? Yes, but if we put a toddler behind the wheel of the M2 and we put a professional driver behind the wheel of the Igo, then sure, the Igo can actually win the battle. This does not mean, however, that the Igo is any good, that it's meta or that it can work as long as you play it right. It doesn't depend on you playing it right. Sure, you need to play it right, but it also depends on your opponent throwing the fight completely. And with car racing, there's also a lot more of an argument to be had. Because it's all about racing lines. And it's all about outpacing your opponent. In this game, it, it's a little bit different. It's not about outplaying him in your own terms. If you're looking at time trials or like qualifying laps for example. Where you're just trying to set the best lap time without actually having to overtake each other. Guess what? 
it's all about the lines and the entries and the exits and things that you can practice on your own. You are not that much influenced by your opponent. In a car, when you are doing laps and you're trying to set your best time, you are not affected by what your opponent does. You can just do your best, you can get your best time and that's all there is to it. Whereas in this game, the battle planes, even if they are worse pilots, are actually going to hamper you. They are gonna try to go Mario Kart on your ass and shoot blue shells at you. And this is gonna make it a whole lot more complicated because now your enemy is actually able to deny you from doing the things that you need to do. So sure, you have the, the skill set and you have the knowledge to do exactly what you need to, but if your enemy knows what you are going to do, if your enemy knows what he has to do to just sit on your six and completely deny you the ability to perform any kind of action that can counter him, then what are you realistically going to be doing unless he absolutely throws it? Nothing. You are gonna do exactly nothing. And that's the real problem of this. This plane just has too many handicaps. Yes, you can make it work. But again, it comes down to what your enemy does. All these planes that Cavesnop has run into in this, in this lobby could have done something about what he did. If they had flared his A9Ls, if they had notched his missiles. And I know this goes for basically every top team match, but bear with me for a second. If they played it right, he wouldn't have killed a single person. Yes, this goes for basically every top tier match. In top tier, if people don't make mistakes, it will again come down to flight performance. The thing is, it's a big team game. It's Awareness is a very big thing. And now it's 16 v 16. And the fights are a little bit more spread out. And people come from more angles. It actually becomes even harder. So it's understandable that people make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. You cannot not make mistakes. There is simply too much stuff going on to always fly perfectly and that's completely fair try to get your kills that way try to make most out of the situation that you are given and you will find that you will be able to go positive two to one three to one it's completely valid the thing is another plane would have been able to probably do it better than the plane you just did it in thank you all for watching make sure to subscribe to cavenup if you haven't already and if you made it this far into the video until the next one i'll see you then